Good day to you brothers and sisters. Going to show you something cool as always. This is lesson number seven in a series I'm doing uh, called Raptured from the Curse, Seventh Bold Judgment. Lesson number seven. This one we're going to be in Zechariah chapter 14. Uh, the chapters in the Holy Bible that we've covered in this series so far, the other six have been Revelation 16, Isaiah 24, uh, Revelation 19, um, Zechariah 9, Malachi 3, Malachi 4, and here we are back in Zira Zechariah chapter 14. Hopefully you've seen the other six lessons, or at least a few of them. What I'm doing in this series is I'm answering many of the questions that the church has in ref reference to the end of the day of the Lord. What is going on? You know, all of these chapters I'm taking you to in Father's Word is the seventh bowl judgment day of planet Earth. Seventh bowl judgment day, end of the world as we know it. All of these chapters, I say all of them, tell us all the information that we need to know about our rapture. Who's getting raptured? When are they getting raptured? What is the day of the Lord? Why is the day of the Lord? When is the day of the Lord? Uh, how does the battle of Armageddon come into play? Uh, what else? Oh, does the bride fight? Does the bride fight? What's uh, our white horse that we're supposed to be riding on? Are we an army or are we not? So all of those questions are going to be answered in this series. In fact, they're, most of them are pretty much answered in every single lesson, in every single chapter I'm taking you to. Again, why am I doing this just to answer these important questions? Yes, but it's really sad that the church has really doesn't have a clue on what the seventh bowl is all about. The seventh time around the city on the seventh day. Sound familiar? Um, so that's what we're doing here. All of these chapters are your rapture. Now wait a minute, brother. You're saying we're being raptured on the last day? Then what are we being raptured from if we've been here for all the trumpets, six out of the seven bowls? What are we being raptured from? You're being raptured from the wrath of the Lamb, the curse of the plague of the furnace of fire, judgment day when the tares are burned when most of the earth is burned most of the atmosphere is burned all right that's what you're being raptured from to be more specific as far as scripture verses what you are being raptured from on the last day of the age it, get your pens ready is second thessalonians 1 8 that's the wrath we are not appointed for it's the wrath of the lamb climaxed to the wrath of God 945 days from the sixth seal through to the seventh bowl all right second Thessalonians 1 8 second Peter 3 verses 10 through 12 right here in Zechariah verse 12 Zechariah 14 12 you're gonna see the curse that you're gonna be raptured from also Matthew 13 verses 42 and 50 uh, and many other places Malachi 3 talks about burning like an oven when the Son of Righteousness arises, when Jesus returns. We've got other verses talking about the refiner's fire. This is what you're being raptured from. But you're here, my brothers and sisters, for the trumpets and the bowls, except for the last bowl. Now, pre-trib uh, rapture believers were half right. Post-trib rapture believers were half right. Mid-trib, pre-wrath believers were in the ballpark, but the truth was somewhere in the middle. What do I mean by that? Well, it's a seventh bowl rapture, but it's not just a joining to the Lord. It is a catching up, a snatching away, a rescue. So post-trib, call it a rapture, because it is. Once you know what the judgment day is all about, the seventh bowl that's poured into the air at the return of Christ, once you understand that, you realize you are being raptured from something horrible. Hallelujah. 
So that's what this series is all about. We're here in Zechariah 14 today. Let's get started. You're going to see some cool stuff here. You're going to see the rapture. Um, you're going to see the curse that you are being raptured from. You're also going to see uh, the hour of your rapture. The hour of the return of Christ. Brother, you're telling me we're allowed to know the day and the hour? No, I'm telling you you're allowed to know the hour. But you're not allowed to know the year or the day. Until? Until what? Until he comes? No. No, you're giving quite a bit of notice. It's Daniel 8. Daniel 8, verses 23 through 25. The 2,300 day, not year, prophecy or countdown. It's a how long countdown. Just like the 1335, the 1290, the 1260. All right. Other scriptures come into play like the 430 day siege of Jerusalem. Isaiah 23 year prophecy of Ethiopia and Egypt go uh, walking barefoot and naked. Uh, the year and some days prophecy of Isaiah 32. And look at my timeline on my keep and share uh, link my Excel spreadsheet and you will see all the how long countdowns and prophecies in Isaiah and Jeremiah all in the proper order Revelation 3 3 says I will not come upon you as a thief because you watch that's paraphrased check it out Revelation 3 3 when will we know the exact day of our Lord's return we already know the hour it's right here in this chapter it's also in Isaiah 17 14 and it's in many other places in scripture when will you know the day once the Antichrist is crowned at the first seal he shall arise that vile one from the vile city of Nineveh Nahum chapter 1 Daniel eleven twenty one first seal is loosed by the worthy lamb and we and you begin the 2300 day countdown until the last day of the age return of Jesus Christ and the curse of the wrath of the lamb the climax to the wrath of God it's been here the whole time brothers and sisters here we go Zechariah 14 verse 1 behold the day of the Lord is coming and your spoil will be divided in your midst Okay, the day of the Lord is 945 days long, climaxing with the day, the return of Jesus Christ, with Father's Spirit in him, in his glorified body. The day of the Lord is coming, and your spoil will be divided in your midst, for I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. Brothers and sisters, that matches Daniel 11, verses 44 and 45. That's the siege of Jerusalem, 430 days beginning at the sixth trumpet. Does the day of the Lord begin at that time? No. The day of the Lord begins at the sixth seal. All right. Now, what's the length of time between the sixth seal and the sixth trumpet? Well, we know the fifth trumpet's 150 days long. Correct. Father said to use 30 days as a month. During the 70th week of Daniel, Father said that. Well, where did he say that, brother? He told you 1,260 days is three and a half years, 42 months, did he not? Divide 1,260 uh, 1260 days by 42 months, and what do you get? Exactly 30 days a month. I don't care what Enoch says. It, it don't matter. During the 70th week of Daniel, the only calendar you got to worry about as far as the length of a month is 30 days. Father simplifies it for the bride. And he proves it to you. So there's no question when he told you 42 months or 1,260 days exactly. So I don't want to hear any more debate about that. Hallelujah. Now, fifth, uh, fifth trumpet is what? 150 days long, five months. Is it not? Well, what about the first four trumpets? How long are they? That is called the year of their punishment in Jeremiah. Look on my timeline. You'll probably find the exact verse in Jeremiah. It might be Jeremiah 23. We'd have to look. 
the year of their punishment. Talking about the Israeli leadership and the Israeli prophets that side with the Caliph and the Mahdi and the Messiah, this one descending from Abraham, supposedly. All right. And talks them into rounding up all the Christians and rounding up the Holy Bibles and defiling all of the Christian holy places at the fifth seal. From that length of time until the fifth trumpet is the year and some days. Excuse me. I'm thinking of the length of the entire fifth seal. That's the year and some days prophecy of Isaiah 32. Excuse me. But the year of their punishment is the first four trumpets, 360 days. Let's stick with this chapter here, though. For I will gather all nations to, to battle against Jerusalem. <clears throat> now, when does Israel blow the first trumpet? If the sixth trumpet is the 430 days siege of Jerusalem mentioned in the first few chapters of the book of Ezekiel, what about the first trumpet? When is it blown? Well, if you look at Daniel 11, it's blown at the tail end of verse 40. The key phrase you're looking for is pass through. That's in reference to the king of the north, Caliphate army, who's just about to become a beast kingdom as he acts against the strongest fortresses during the fifth seal. When he gets done fighting the sacrifice by the river Euphrates battle, that you see there in Daniel 11, 40. That's when the king of the south, Egypt, and its confederation of African continent nations, such as Libya and Tunisia and Ethiopia and the rest, when they go up to the river Euphrates to make a preemptive strike on the king of the north, the Antichrist army, and they get defeated, Count, sounds a lot like past history, but this is in reference to the 70th week of Daniel. How do you know that? Because it's in Daniel 11. It's going to happen again. Now, is this battle going to take place exactly at Gargamesh, up there by the Turkish border, or further south along the Euphrates River? Maybe closer to Baghdad? I'm not sure. But it's going to happen. And when the king of the north wins, and they will win, they'll decimate the king of the south and the uh, confederation of African continent nations. And when they do, they're going to reconstitute themselves. And now Father is ready to put his rod of indignation, Antichrist army, into action. And yes, I said fathers, because he whistles for the fly and the bee. He whistles for this uh, Islamic State army that's going to act like a... Um, a hired razor, if you will, rod of indignation army, it's father's doing. He raises them, he whistles for them, he calls for them. You look on my Excel spreadsheet on my keep and share link, my notes that surround my timeline, you'll see all the verses that prove that the Islamic State is the beast kingdom and it's father's doing. It blows people's mind. I know. Father knows what he's doing. you got to trust him. Father will eventually, at the seventh trumpet, muster his second army. And these will be his... You see it, I think, in... A, is it Isaiah 13? We'll have to look. But um, his sanctified ones, his mighty ones, the ones who rejoice in his exaltation, it's time to bring about the fall of ba uh, Baghdad and her bullies, the fall of Babylon. Starting at the seventh trumpet, 45 days of the bulls of wrath. Father musters his second army. Hopefully the United States is one of them. After 45 days, all of the tares have been bundled and gathered to the main threshing floor, the hill, the valley that surrounds the hill of Nazareth, the valley of Armageddon, Jehoshaphat, Megiddo, whatever you want to call it, Jezreel. That's the wedding hall, Matthew 22, Revelation 16, 16. That's it. Armageddon's the wedding location. On the last day. Is it going to be a beautiful wedding? It's going to be a bloody wedding. Zechariah 9 says that the bride of Christ is going to be soaked in blood so much that it looks like they've been drinking wine all night long celebrating. Dipped in blood. Revelation 19, the commander of the Lord's army, Jesus' robe is going to be dipped in blood. 
It's the battle of the great day of God Almighty, so we can, I say we, Father has us participating in the killing, the rebuking, the chasing, the destroying, the burning. The Bible makes it clear, you're riding a chariot of fire, chariot of Israel, that's your white horse. Isaiah 41, when we get there, in this series of lessons, you'll see that you are a true threshing sledge machine. You? Well, maybe it's Israel, not us. Brothers and sisters, at each one of these lessons, I have to point you to Galatians 3 to find out who the true sons of Abraham are, the true Zion, the true daughters of Zion, daughters of Jerusalem. It's you, the church. Now, what about the small s seed of Jacob? people who died years and years and years before Jesus ever walked this earth. They weren't righteous enough to become members of the family of God, were they? Some were. Father delighted in some of them. He did. He may be taking millions of those people. You need to read Galatians 3, brothers and sisters. If you have any questions about the church being separate from Israel, they're not. We're not. You are Zion. You are the sons of Abraham. That was Father's plan all along. If you are sons of Abraham, you are in the seed, capital S, which is Christ. Galatians 3. One olive tree, one fig tree, one grape vine. Hallelujah. Will be harvested one time. Jesus does not come in phases. He appears one time, and it's at on Judgment Day, seventh bowl, the day of your wedding, the day of your rapture from the wrath of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Getting back to the lesson. For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. That's sixth trumpet. The city shall be taken. Guess what? You read in other scriptures that when Jerusalem falls, all right, at the end of the bowls of wrath, even though the cup has already passed at the sounding of the seventh trumpet, when Elijah and Moses are seen raising from the dead and ascending to heaven, and Jerusalem is shaken and a-quaking, and 10,000, one-tenth of the city falls, and 7,000 die, that's when the cup is passed. But the siege of Jerusalem must be completed. And you're going to see that Jesus returns before, just as the city is being taken, and when it does, half of the city will already be taken away as slaves. You know, do half take the mark? Do none of them take the mark? Are they all free from the mark? Well, that's what the sheep goat judgment is going to find out whenever it's time to flee Baghdad and head back to the Jordan River. Jesus is going to stop them this night and, and conduct the sheep goat judgment, looking for those with the mark. If they've got the mark, they will be burned in the wrath of the Lamb, the, the, the wrath that you are raptured from. Here we go. The city shall be taken. Haifa, Tel Aviv have already fell. This is the end of the bowls of wrath. The house is rifled and the women ravished, raped. Half of the city shall go into captivity by the time Jesus arrives. All right. A third of the rest of Israel goes into captivity. You can read that in Zechariah 13. In fact, it's right here on this page. All right. Two-thirds of Israel will be cut off and die. One-third will be left in it. I will bring one-third through the fire and refine them and test them. Read all about it in Zechariah 13. But here in Zechariah 14, Jesus returns and we are raptured. Continuing on with verse 3, But the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Did you know that the Bible refers to the majority of the remnant as glorified saints? Not necessarily living man of dust people who have never died. This remnant, most of them are being resurrected or translated at Jesus' coming. What are the angels looking for when they gather the elect? What are they looking for? How do they know it's you? They're picking up everyone who has their light on, lamps lit. The temple of God, if it resides in you at the time the angels are sent forth to gather the elect, the Holy Spirit resides in you, you're being picked up and taken up there on top of that storm cloud. That broad place of Psalm 18 to meet 
your groom. And guess what? That broad place on the top of that storm cloud acts as an armory. Is that where the wedding takes place? If it doesn't take place in the third heaven, doesn't it at least take place in the first heaven, our sky? Well, not really. How do you know that? Because of Matthew 22, Revelation 16, 16. Matches Matthew 22. The wedding is going to take place in the valley of Jezreel, around the hill of Nazareth, the threshing floor. You may even get wed as you're walking and trampling on the ashes of the tares. Wouldn't that make for a pretty wedding? <laughs> I kid you not, brothers and sisters. You need to read Malachi 3 and 4. See, the, see my last two lessons. Hallelujah. Uh, here we are. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations. As he fights in the day of battle, this is not the invisible presence of the Lord during the bowls of wrath. This is after Jerusalem has been under siege, after the city has been completely taken and fell. Half of the city shall go into captivity. Is he going to stand on the Mount of Olives? Yes, he is. We're getting ready to read it. Stay with me. Then the Lord will go forth from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. And he's bringing back who? All the church, all his bride. Eh, wrong. <laughs> Sorry, brothers and sisters, you're wrong. We need to take you back to First and Second Thessalonians, First Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, he only brings back the souls of those who sleep in Christ. Well, doesn't the Bible say he descends with all his saints with him? Yeah, from about seventy thousand feet. Not from the spiritual realm. We meet him. We never leave planet Earth, brothers and sisters. Not the living. We're glorified in the twinkling of an eye and join them. The resurrection of the dead has to take place first. Does the dead get resurrected in heaven and come back with Jesus? Well, which heaven are you talking about? The first heaven, second heaven, or third heaven? Third heaven being the throne room of God. Second heaven is the atmosphere. Excuse me. Second heaven is space, the universe, outer space. And first heaven is our sky, our atmosphere. Everything above the ground on planet Earth. So, you get what I'm saying, brothers and sisters. There's only one resurrection of the dead. Galatians 3 proves that the sons of Abraham are the church, the family of God, all that are in the vine, in Christ. There's not more than one coming. There's not more than one resurrection. Somebody's been lying to you, not on purpose. They were taught wrong, brothers and sisters. But here we have Jesus being sent forth. The Lord will go forth. Now, which Lord is it? Is it Jesus? Is it Father? Who is it? Well, it's the glorified body of Jesus. But Revelation 19 makes it very plain that it's God coming. It's God, the Father, is going to reign during the millennium. I thought it was Jesus. Well, it's Jesus' body, glorified body, hallelujah. But Father, Spirit is in Jesus. So, the Revelation 19 makes it clear. Don't let me confuse you, Lord God omnipotent is reigning during the millennium. Hallelujah. That's why when it says the Lord, this is Father going forth in Jesus' physical glorified body. Father is coming down to you. Father walked this earth before in the body of Jesus. Now he's coming back. This is Father, and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle, and in that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west. Is Jesus coming to save the city from being taken? No. How do we know that? Because we just read the city is already taken. All right, the gap in the wall for either one day, five days, however long it is, the enemy has been pouring in, raping the women, killing or taking slaves. Half the city shall be taken as slaves. You know what happened to the other half? They're dead. Either they were fighting and lost, 
or they died of famine, starvation. There's scriptures that talk about this siege of Jerusalem, brothers and sisters, being worse than the Holocaust. They're eating their own placenta. The Bible makes it very clear and very graphic. It's going to be hell on earth. This is going to happen again to Israel. Christians that make a lot of money going to Israel, they're not telling them the truth. They'll never be let back in that country again. Well, we don't need to get specific. We don't want to hurt the feelings of our Jewish brothers. Don't you think you should warn them? Don't you think you should warn them? Well, we're not 100% sure that this is... 70th week of Daniel stuff. This could all be like AD 70. No, brothers and sisters. This is the return of our Lord when he goes forth on the last day. Here we go. Uh, have of it toward the south, and you shall flee through my mountain valley, for the mountain valley shall reach to Azal. Where is that at, brothers and sisters? It's a couple miles east of Jerusalem, so maybe a mile and a half, mile and three quarters from the Mount of Olives, just to the east of it. If I looked on Google Earth, will I see Azal today? You'll see it, but it has a different name. What is it? It's Isaria, spelled E-I. Isaria. That's Azal. That's Bethany. Remember Lazarus? That's Bethany. So these few thousand that are going to be left alive that didn't take the mark, who weren't glorified, the temple of God did not reside in them. They were not taken up to the top of the storm cloud when the angels are sent forth to gather the elect. And they weren't sure if Jesus was the Messiah or not. They did not bow a knee to him in time. Father did not reside in them. All right, remember... Uh, the ten was it the ten brides bridesmaids remember that half and half half were ready half weren't but they didn't take the mark of the beast so they're not going to be killed by the wrath of the lamb the plague of the furnace of fire this night but they knew that the antichrist was not the voice of their messiah their shepherd they knew that they just really wasn't sure about jesus and when they do realize it is too late, but he's still going to allow them to enter the millennium and become the family of God. They'll die and they'll be resurrected at the great white throne judgment and face judgment. But they'll eventually, most of them, become the family of God. Hallelujah. But that's where Azal is. But Jesus is not coming back to save Jerusalem from the Islamic State beast kingdom he's not he's waiting till it falls he wants it to fall what remember father's invisible presence is orchestrating the entire day of the lord he musters his first army the hired razor the fly and the bee if you will the rod of indignation army it's time to test the people brothers and sisters it's time to test the people in America. It's time to test the people in Paris. When the Satan takes over the mind and body of this world leader, or at least the Islamic State leader in the Middle East, the whole world will then start to marvel and follow him because he's going to be working signs, wonders, and miracles. It's going to be a big test, brothers and sisters. Then at the seventh trumpet, the cup of madness passes. Father shows his pity face to Israel. And uh, we begin the 45-day process of bringing about the fall of Babylon and the gathering of the wheat and tares to the threshing floor at the Valley of Jezreel. Hallelujah. All right, let's continue on with chapter 14. Then you shall... Uh, you shall flee through my mountain valley, for the mountain valley shall reach to Azal, Bethany, Isaria. Yes, you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Thus the Lord my God will come, and all the saints with you. Let's talk about that, brothers and sisters. Thus the Lord my God will come, and all the saints with you. What does that mean? Does that prove a... Uh, pre-tribulation rapture does it prove a post-tribulation rapture what does it mean 
Well, thank the Lord we have many, 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 many scriptures to look at. All right. Who comes back with the Lord God? Who? Those souls of those who sleep in Christ. But it says right here, and all the saints come with him. Yes. From the perspective of the inhabitants on the earth looking up, when they start seeing that storm cloud, the lightning flashing from the east to the west, when they see it, by then, by the time they see it, the glorification, the resurrection has already taken place. And as that massive storm cloud is coming lower and lower from 70,000 feet to 50,000 feet to 30,000 feet to 10,000 feet it's coming closer so the inhabitants on the earth can actually literally see the face of Jesus we've seen it in these lessons that we've been doing they're actually going to see your face capital Y all right they're gonna see the anger they're gonna see the fire in his eyes by the time they see the Lord God and can make him out, all the saints are coming with them from the perspective of the inhabitants of the earth. But he does not leave the throne room of heaven, the third heaven, with anyone other than the souls of those who sleep in Christ. The resurrection has not happened yet. The resurrection happens when he breaks through the atmosphere and does what? Blows the last trumpet. Well, when does he blow the last trumpet? On the day of his appearing at the seventh bowl. Well, how do you know that, brothers and sisters? Because of the uh, lesson of Zechariah 9 we did, which was what? 7, 6, 5, 4. I think it was lesson 4. Zechariah 9 is the last trumpet. Plain as day. Hallelujah. Who blows it? The Lord God. Does Jesus blow it? It's Jesus' glorified body blowing it, but Father's Spirit is in him. However you want to word it. That's the last trumpet. The seventh angel blows the seventh trumpet. This is 45 days later. After the seventh trumpet. The end of the bowls of wrath. On the last day of the age. Just like John chapter 6 told us four times. That's when the last trumpet's going to be blown. In Ezekiel 37. Those dry bones will come to life. Again, keep Galatians 3 in the back of your mind. The church is Zion. Hallelujah. So the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. Coming from high altitude in the first heaven. Not from the throne room of God. You got to get that straight brothers and sisters. It shall come to pass in that day that there will be no light. The lights will diminish. It shall be one day which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night. Who knows the day? The Lord. Will we know the day after the first seal is loose? Yes. Well, it doesn't kind of sound like that's what it's saying here. Well, you got to add scripture to other scriptures. They can't contradict each other. Daniel 8 verses 23 through 25 make it very clear brothers and sisters we you will see it the Antichrist King shall arise at the first seal and then when you get to verse 25 of Daniel 8 you see Jesus coming to earth and taking the crown off of his head and uh, Jesus has dominion hallelujah You can't just take verses. You can't just say, shoot me a verse, brother. Prove your point. Shoot me a verse. It's called reading the entire book and then going and reading another book in, in its entirety and putting the Word of God together like a puzzle, brothers and sisters. Now, would you like to know the hour of your Lord's return? Here's one of many verses that tell you. He'll go forth when? Neither day nor night, but at evening time it shall happen that it will be light. Oh, it'll be the worst lightning storm of all times. All of these millions of chariots of fire roaring around the sky like a whirlwind of the Lord, almost like a, a school of fish. <laughs> and the bride acting as a giant threshing machine. Hallelujah, what a sight to behold. 
Go back and read Zechariah 9. The bride's going to be covered in blood. Um, there it is at evening time, twilight. Again, you could read Isaiah 17, 14. We'll get there in this series eventually. You got what? Uh, I think Psalms 90, verse 6, Genesis 8, 11. I can name so many scriptures, brothers, that tell you that at twilight, when Israel traditionally starts a new day, that's when Jesus is going to resurrect the dead and glorify the living at his return. Right just before complete darkness. It's going to be one heck of a fireworks show. If you was father and you were orchestrating all of this, wouldn't you make this fireworks extravaganza just as the sun went down? Of course you would. That's how the 4th of July is played out um, throughout the entire country of America. You have, you're made in the image of God. He felt the same way. That's how he wants to do this show this night. It's a wrath, the wrath of the Lamb. Let's keep reading, and you're going to read about what is the wrath of the Lamb that we're raptured from. You'll see it when we get to verse 12. Here we go. Let's pick up the pace a little bit. Verse 8, And in that day it shall be that living waters shall flow from Jerusalem. Now we're talking about the millennium. Half of them toward the eastern sea, and half of them towards the western sea. In both summer and winter it shall occur. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. It's Jesus, but it's Father, Spirit in him. In that day it shall be the Lord is one, and his name one. All the land shall be turned into a plain from Geba to Ramon, south of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be raised up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate to the place of the first gate and the corner gate and from the tower of Hananel to the king's wine presses. The people shall dwell in it, and no longer shall there be utter destruction. But Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited, safely inhabited, until when? Until the end of the millennium, when here comes Gog again, remember? Gotta, we got to do a final sifting before we start eternity. Uh, verse 12, here we go. This is the wrath of the Lamb. This is what you are raptured from. First Thessalonians 5, 9. This is it, brothers and sisters. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. The marked ones, here we go. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets. And their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. It shall come to pass in that day that a great panic from the Lord will be among them. Everyone will seize the hand of his neighbor and raise his hand against his neighbor's hand. Judah also will fight at Jerusalem. Is Israel's army still intact? No, it was utterly defeated and destroyed. Then who is this fighting? This is the bride. This is the sons of Abraham, the church, in their glorified new body, fighting. That's who this is, brothers and sisters. Oh, I don't think it is. It is. It's the remnant. When he comes with healing and his, in his wings and binds you up and heals you by giving you a glorified new body, raised you from the dead, this is it. Judah also will fight at Jerusalem. This is the bright army you read about in Revelation 19. And the wealth of all the surrounding nations shall be gathered together, gold, silver, and apparel in great abundance. Such also shall be the plague on the horse and the mule, on the camel and on the donkey, and all the cattle that will be in those camps. They're going to be burned up too, so shall this plague be. And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations, talking about the morning after, which came against Jerusalem, shall go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This is during the millennium. Yes, the Feast of Tabernacles will be kept throughout the millennium. Jesus, Father, Spirit, in Jesus, will rule from the rebuilt Jerusalem. So if there was any radioactivity, it won't be left by the time morning occurs, which leads me to believe that Jerusalem is probably not nuked by Iran. <coughs> Please excuse me. Jeremiah 49 38 but we know that Baghdad is Tyre Lebanon may be 
Mecca, Riyadh, Basra, Jordan. How do you know who gets nuked that night? By the Alam bunker of southwest Iran that Jeremiah 49, 38 talks about. How do you know? Read all the scriptures in the Bible that talk about the end result of the nations that came against Jerusalem. Whichever ones say that it'll be desolate forever and no one will ever, ever live there again, that's how you know who gets the nuke. But, it doesn't sound like there's going to be much difference between the uh, fire and brimstone coming out of the nostrils of Jesus Christ versus a nuke. It doesn't sound like there's a whole lot of difference other than the radioactivity. But the ability to, be, to make a city desolate is, sounds like it's the same. Verse 17, And it shall be that whichever of the families of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, on them there will be no rain. Alright? The Lord is ruling during the millennium. If you don't act right, you get no rain. Well, isn't the uh, Satan bound for a thousand years? Yeah. Are people still acting like knuckleheads unless... Jesus uh, taps him on the hand. Yes, you see it right here. If the family of Egypt will not come up and enter in, they shall have no rain. They shall receive the plague with which the Lord strikes the nations who do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. The plague of no rain. Don't confuse it with the plague of the fiery furnace. In, in verse 12, This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles during the millennium. In that day, holiness to the Lord shall be engraved on the bells of the horses. The pots in the Lord's house shall be like bowls before the altar. Yes, every pot in Jerusalem and Judah shall be holiness to the Lord of hosts. Everyone who sacrifices shall come and take them and cook in them. What did that just say, brothers and sisters, in regards to the millennium? Everyone who sacrifices shall come and take them and cook in them. Are we going to have sacrifices during the millennium? Yes. Read Ezekiel of uh, chapters 40 through 48, all about the millennium. All-star team of priests of Zadok are being resurrected and brought back. People got to eat. By the end of the millennium, you're going to have hundreds and hundreds of billions of people on this planet, the greatest nursery of all time. People are going to eat meat during the millennium, and they're going to eat lots of it. Animals got to die every day to feed this massive amount of people. Now, um, our, sa our sacrifice is going to be performed to, do, to accomplish the same thing as they did before Christ. No. But the animals still need to be killed in such a way that pays honor to Father and thanks Father for the blessings of the food. So it's going to be done a certain way that brings honor and thanksgiving to our Lord. But the animals are still going to be killed. So you can't just take old uh, Betsy out back and cut her up. You've got to do it in a way that's pleasing to God. We'll find out more when the millennium comes. But don't say the temple's not going to be rebuilt. Don't say that Jesus isn't going to rule as a very Jewish king. And don't say he's not going to bring back the sacrifices. Yes, Jesus is. He's going to honor his Father. In fact, it is Father's Spirit in the glorified Jesus. Father living with us. Hallelujah. Uh, in that day there shall be no longer be a Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. All right. In the house of the Lord of hosts. In the house of Father. Uh, no one will enter father's temple except who he wants to enter his temple during the millennium brothers and sisters i hope this lesson has been a blessing to you think about what all you've learned uh if there's some things if my understanding was such that doesn't agree with yours well i suggest you watch the other 20 or 30 lessons to this series all right if you do it'll make a lot more sense brothers and sisters don't just pick a verse here and there. Read the whole chapter and put 30 or 40 seventh bold chapters together to get the whole picture. Every one of these are seventh bold chapters that I'm doing. This is lesson 7, Zechariah 14. You know the hour of your Lord's return? 
You know that the rapture takes place on the last day. You know what we're being raptured from. Zechariah 14, 12, the plague of the furnace of fire. I told you all the other locations you could find the plague of the furnace of fire, the wrath that we're not appointed for. I mentioned all that to you. All right. You know about uh, when Jesus touches down on terra firma. All right. You know whether Jerusalem and Israel is going to fall or not when Jesus comes back. Does he come back to save the day? Well, he's going to resurrect the remnant. And he's going to rule from Israel, and he's going to glorify the true, the true Israel, the sons of Abraham, the church, those that are in the vine, in Christ. But you see the results of what's going on in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I hope this lesson in the series has been a blessing to you. I hope you'll stay with me throughout this series. Not sure how many lessons it's going to going to take to cover every chapter in the Holy Bible that refers to the seventh bowl uh, judgment day, day of judgment at Jesus' return. We're going to look, find them all. We're going to find them all in the Holy Bible, Old and New Testament. And you're going to get the entire picture once we study all of them. It may take a month to do it. Brothers and sisters, can't wait to see you next time. God bless.